In this video, we're going to talk about how to progress lines of dialogue and also how to fix a problem that's going to arise whenever you try to do something like that. Um, so I have a, I'm just using our project that we used uh, last time with performing segues. Um, I've created a new little area. This is just a label that I gave a background to and it's just blank. It has no text in it right now. I made a new class called View Controller 2. That's what the class is of this View Controller. Um, so you can just ignore the code up here. So within that class, I declare an array called dialogue, and these are my different lines of dialogue that are gonna appear in this dialogue box. So a first line, a second line, and a third line. Then I have a variable for the current position that our user is within that dialogue chain, and they start at zero, so that would be the first one. Then whenever they hit this dialogue button, we're gonna to go to the second one, and then when they hit it again, we're gonna to go to the third one. So we're going to increment this value by one each time. So uh, very simply after that, I have my labels, that's this box right here, connected as an outlet, right? I'm gonna be accessing its data. And then I have a function for detecting when this button is tapped. When that button is tapped, we take that label, the text of that label, and we make it equal to dialogue, so that array and the current position value. So right now it's actually saying zero. So the first part of our array, right? The first element in our array. Let's go ahead and pop current position back in here. So whenever you tap that, it's at zero. So we're gonna display that. And then the next piece of this is we're also going to add one, two, so plus equals, we're gonna add one to that current position. So then the next time we tap it, it's gonna be at second line and it's gonna add another one to this. And then the next time we tap it, we're gonna be at the third line and add another one to this. Let's go ahead and hit play and run this and see what it looks like. So I'm gonna just go to that view controller. I tap dialogue. Okay, my first line appeared just fine. My second line appeared just fine. My third line appeared just fine. What happens if they hit this again? That's when we crash, right? I'm gonna go ahead and stop that from running and I'll go back to my user interface how it was before. So the problem is this index is getting out of range, right? We're asking, hey, give us the fourth element, aka number three. So this is now equal to three give us the fourth element here, but there is no fourth element. So what does it do? It crashes. So for us, um, we're gonna start that back at zero. We need to have an if statement. So let's have uh, an if statement here. So we'll say, okay, we're gonna add text to that dialogue, current position. If the, uh, we'll do this here. Actually, we'll wrap the whole thing in an if statement. So we'll write the statement like this. We'll say, if current position, current position is greater than dialogue.count, right? So a count of the number of elements within dialogue. So there's one, two, three elements. If it is greater than dialogue.count, then we need to, um, we'll just like for now, we'll just print something that says we done. Uh, but otherwise, we'll say else, so if it's less than dialogue.count, do this. So we're gonna do that code right there that we had before. Let's make sure this is all set up correctly. It looks good. So we're doing if current position, so our current position of our little reader is greater than dialog count, print we done, else do this, increment it, and continue going. Let's see what happens now. So I'll hit play, and I'm gonna hit the button. And we still crash, weird. So what's going on here let me stop it from running again and go back to how we were, is that we're actually not looking at count is a, a direct count. It's one, two, three. It doesn't start at zero. So we need to do count minus one. So if it's bigger than count minus one, do this. Let's hit play and see how that works. We done. So it doesn't crash. It just says we done. So this could be performing a segue, moving to the next scene, or offering up choices, or even just turning off that button. We could turn that button off. So let's grab our dialog button, connect it to our code as an outlet so that we can access it. I'll call it dialog button. And then we'll say, okay, dialog button dot alpha equals zero or something like that. We could also do is enabled, right? There's a bunch of different options hit play and see if that works. So that dialog button should disappear once we reach dialog count minus one. So I hit dialog count, cool, and now the button's gone. Um, we could even do minus two if we wanted to. So the reason we're using minus one, right, is this count starts counting at once. It says one, two, three. 
whereas the actual index value is 0, 1, 2. So we need to count it at 2. Once we get bigger than 2, stop it. Doing this and not just doing if current position is greater than 2 is better programming wise because what we're doing is we're enabling this to be um, mutable in the future, right? So I could add a fourth line here and let's see. So by adding a fourth line, I don't have to, oh, oops, I didn't actually add my second print, uh, quote there. By adding a fourth line, I'm able to mutate um, what I have before and it's just better at the end of the day, right? Let's say if it's uh, equal to that, go ahead and make that disappear. Equals equals, sorry. Hit play and we'll do the same thing. Nice. Oh, that time it did not progress to the next one because we're equaling, right? Which we need to actually, we, we do need to switch to the greater than. Uh, we probably should do that in a different place of like even asking if it's tapped. Maybe we do that down here um, so it doesn't occur when it's tapped, but rather when this is added. Anyways, you get the point though. The idea is, is sound, so that's the best way to do our dialogue.